What's up? What's up? What's up, you two family? All right, you two. <laughs> I'm so I'm so tired of you. <laughs> All right, you two. We gonna get into today. This is Candace Owens, and she's speaking at the 2020 CPAC um, conference. And what that is, if you don't already know, that is a conservative political action conference. It's an annual conference. Look at you. And did Look you at know, you the, breaking that thing down. I like to do research on things, make sure that uh, I, I, I don't, that, you know, I'm hey, you know, just a little bit, just a little something. You gotta get um, you two family some information, right? Just a little bit, yeah, just a little bit of information. Bit, I like to share a little, little bit of bit, 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 But yes, it is the CPA conference <laughs> in 2020. So okay. the first one was held in 1974, <gasps> so one year before you were born. One year before 19, you were born, 1974. Oh, man. <laughs> you telling my age now. My bad. But yes, that's, that, was the, that was when the first one, one of these conferences was made. So Candace is the speaker at the event. Okay. So let's, let's, let's see what she got I mean, what, on. anytime she's given a speech, the man, information she, that you know, she just she, she gives. She's been keeping it real just, the whole time, yeah, she's man. Keeping she's real. always keeping it real, man. No matter and what. it's information that you really yeah, yeah. are interested in hearing. And that's what it's all about. You know, when they do the speech, you, you want to get information. Yeah. You, you want to get information and help you make the You're right You're hoping choice. they share information with you. Hopefully. Not just coming up there with just junk. And rambling on. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you want to be informed and of course, even if you it's not directly you know, a line that what you, you think. And you want it to be truth. You know, yeah, it's a song that's called Tell Me Lies, Tell Me Sweet Little Lies. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need all that. I need the truth. No, we don't need that. <laughs> not not when it's dealing with um, your um, political yeah. um, community. Because yeah. you want the, you want the information. whoever is running the country mm, to you know what's going on with that person. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Falling off bikes and stuff. We ain't got time for that. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Candace Owens. She's about to drink it. <laughs> You're so silly. She about to bring it. <laughs> wow. Hello. Can you guys hear me all the way in the back? Yes. I love you guys too. All right, I'm gonna get right into this. Um, so I, I said to my husband the other day um, that it's become apparent to me over these uh, last few years that the left has no idea that the world did not begin in 1776. Three years of traveling the country and facing off with hysterical liberals and that is my scientific conclusion, that they haven't the slightest idea that anything exists or that anything ever existed outside of the United States of America. And let me give you a recent example. You will all recall when the left, which in my opinion has morphed into a doomsday cult, feverishly and inaccurately predicting that everything President Trump says or does will end America. Uh, but you all recall when they once again prophesized our doom when Iranian terrorist Soleimani was slain in a military operation. You remember that, right? This is the beginning of World War III, their headlines read. They promised us we were gonna head straight into World War III. It was a a remarkable day uh, because it was the day that we watched Democrats and liberals, the ones who have been shrieking about sexism, misogyny, and the need for more feminism, turn into passionate defenders of the state of Iran the country whose constitution quite literally states that a woman's life is worth half that of a man's, a country where women are punished by law for up to 10 years in prison if they are caught not wearing a veil, suddenly became the apple of the left's eye. Wow. Are you serious? It's deep, man. You get caught without a veil. Wow. Well, God, no. Of course, the war never happened, but in the midst of their delirium, a tweet went out from resident anti-American Colin Kaepernick. And uh, the tweet read, exactly, and I quote, there is nothing new about- She never adds more to what a person says. Mm. She gives the exact quote to back up whatever it is she's about to say. American attacks against black and brown people for the expansion of American imperialism. 
America has always sanctioned and besieged black and brown bodies. American militarism is the weapon wielded by American imperialists to enforce its policing and plundering of the non-white world, end quote. Fascinating. A rant about black and brown bodies being imperialized, a word that I must assume Colin either doesn't know the definition or the history of, used in defense of Iran. And so, of course, you know me on Twitter. I felt it necessary. <laughs> necessary. To mention to Colin, gently, of course, you know me, I'm very nice on Twitter. <laughs> to mention to Colin that that particular country of brown and uh, black bodies used to be known as Persia. And rather, unfortunately, for his implied thesis regarding their perpetual victimhood at the hands of white people, Persia used to be an empire, quite literally an imperial dynasty for 200 years, almost as long as America has been alive. It was once the most powerful state in the world, wow. imperializing regions from Egypt to India, regions of, you guessed it, black and brown people. <laughs> And while I have to say that I was not shocked to learn that Colin Kaepernick has evidently never picked up a historical textbook, I will say, <laughs> I will he say that I was gently. shocked that he hadn't oh, at wow. the very least seen the movie 300. Wow. A little movie where the, where the black and brown bodies are, are looking to imperialize the white bodies in Greece. Maybe he thought it was all made up and, and fiction, or maybe, Maybe Colin Kaepernick isn't earning millions to tell the truth. Maybe he's being paid millions to convince black and brown bodies that they are oppressed, to keep them angry and confused and uneducated, which could explain why on Thanksgiving Day of last year, Colin tweeted, I quote, the US government has stolen over 1.5 billion acres of land from indigenous people. Thank you to my indigenous family. I am with you now and always, end quote. Holiday tweets are his favorite, by the way. On the 4th of July, he tweeted, what to, the American is, what to the American slave is your 4th of July? Co-opting, by the way, a Frederick Douglass quote and stripping it of its original context uh, to convey the idea that blacks owe this country not a moment of celebration. I'm talking about Colin because the picture that he is painting is clear, and I'm using him as an example because it is so in line with the overall opinion that we are seeing come from the left today, an opinion that America is a horribly racist country whose guilt cannot be untethered from her period of slavery, which is interesting because if slavery is an everlasting sin from white men, why was Colin so clearly able to forgive that sin from American indigenous people, his quote unquote family? Hmm. That's an inconvenient truth. You see, the sin of slavery was not brought to this continent by white Europeans as the left would have us imagine. Slavery existed everywhere in the world, including here since the dawn of humanity. Different native mm -hmm. American tribes weren't sitting around kumbayaing over a fireplace. They were trying to imperialize one another they would enslave their war, war captives into labor. They would sometimes sell their own children. They tortured others as a part of their religious rights. And depending on which tribe you were in, cannibalism was even the common. Wow. And that's what we, I mean, when we listened to Summer Soul, he even explained how slavery was, you know, people were enslaved by their own people. And it wasn't yeah. just Africans that were enslaved. It was different countries enslaving their own people or selling them to other countries. Uh, uh. Man, I'm just like, when you get this information for yourself, but like she said, he twisted Frederick Douglass's um, quote to make it fit a narrative. Mm -hmm. Now you have people, black people or black, black and brown people who don't read for themselves to take that quote as, oh my God, Frederick Douglass said it that way. Wow, I'm not. I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna just stay how I am. No, look up the quote yourself. Yeah, read exactly what it says. Yeah, kind of. I mean, the thing is that I was about to think about the cannibalism she was talking about. Oh yeah. I was, I was like, wow, I didn't know they did all that. That's crazy. But slavery went on, and even in the Bible, you know, the Bible say, um, um, you know, slaves obey your slave owner, and um, it tells the slave owner that he must release the slave. Um, after seven years, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what they did in the Bible was that, you know, a slave was considered a servant, you know what I'm saying? So 
they really didn't do the things they did when they got to America. And I get what she's saying. Different places, slaves was getting treated a different way. Yeah. When they, when you when you look at America, it's just but, like me when I customize my car. Um, I got the big rims on it, 26 inch rims. I mean, I, I just like the customized the old school. <laughs> Some people may say, man, dang, you just, just, just messed it alone, man. So, you know, they took it to, when it got to America, they took it to a whole new level. They customized slavery. So even though slavery you know, was going on different places, yeah, yeah, yeah. and when it came to America, of course, it just kind of just changed. But then she said something about cannibalism. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you so, hear, she's going to get into that. I don't know if she's going to say that you got people that was eating you know what I'm saying, people, okay. you know, so you had different things going around going the, the whole world, you know what I'm saying, not just here, but everywhere, you know what I'm saying, and I'm not trying to say that it was right. That's deeper than I'm just not saying it's right. It's, that, it's, it's not person. right to take a person you're, you're, and make them a slave. Eating. It's not right. Wow. Okay. You know. That, that's, that's... Place. Oh, did cannibalism get lost in, in Colin's flowery depiction of indigenous people? Yes, before the Europeans ever landed in the Americas, Native Americans routinely cannibalized one another. Most notorious among them, perhaps, uh, was the Aztecs. When the Spanish colonists arrived in Mexico City, they were greeted by piles of over 100,000 skulls belonging to humans that had been sacrificed to the gods. In fact, in one archeological dig, they found the remains of 42 children, all around the age of five, who were sacrificed to the rain god. Special days required more sacrifice, by the way. On the inauguration of Aztec's Temple of Major, they sacrificed between 20,000 and 60,000 human beings in a single day. Their ceremonies, I'd like to paint a little bit for you a picture of the ceremonies. The ceremonies were performed in front of large crowds. Usually an adult male victim was held on a stone, his chest was slashed open, and the priest would take his still beating heart and hold it to the sun. The severed head was then placed on a rack and his remaining body was rolled down the temple where it was skinned and it was dismembered and the body parts were then distributed to the spectators to take home to eat. For decades, the colonists' writings about the savage culture of Native Americans were dismissed here in the United States. The politically correct argument was that white European men needed to wrongly portray the indigenous people to justify their own genocidal pursuits. Liberals in the United States even went so far as to claim that the Native Americans themselves had lied, or rather, um, more politically correct, had, mid, had been misunderstood um, in their own recorded sacred texts regarding their cannibalistic practices until science happened and anthropology in the year 2000, an anthropologist came and, and was hesitant to report his findings in, from Colorado, which he characterized as definitive evidence for sporadic cannibalism in the Southwest of America. Even the lying, leaking New York Times had to acknowledge the truth in an article <laughs> that they then published entitled, New Data Suggests Cannibalism by Ancient Indians. Now, I want to be clear here that my purpose and sharing all of that is not to issue some sweeping condemnation of Native American Indians, nor is it to offer up a vindication for the murderous actions of mm -hmm. the early colonists. My purpose here is to simply tell the truth, the truth about the history of all men of days past. And that's what it's about, yep, telling yep. the truth. And, and, and the thing is that, um, you know, in the Bible, like I said, back in the Bible, they had servants and they had slaves, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, you become a servant because you owe the debt. You know, when you owe the debt, you have to but go pay that, that debt way. off, and you have to work. It's like they can only um, work you for up to seven years. You know what I'm saying? So, but you did you have people <laughs> back back in those days that that bought and sold slaves. You know what I'm saying? So this has been going on for years. Is it something good? No, it's not. That none of it is good. You know, do we do we compare one with the other? No, we can't. You, we don't do that either. It's just that overall, it's not good. Yeah. You know. But it, I do like how she d is giving a background. You you have in you have a you know, have a picture of what it was and how, of course, it has shifted through the years. And it's like okay, me, me most of the information she, she's sharing, you know, you just find out just now. But it's just that things have been shifted so much to fit in perfectly to somebody else's box yeah how is that okay i mean so, the thing is is that you know let's let's just not let's not play victim right 
that's all we said, man. Just, just you know, it was done. It happened. We can't, we can't go back and change time. Mm-hmm. We move forward from here. You know what I'm saying? We have, a, you have the opportunity, especially in America, to be whatever you want to be. Yeah. It's up to you. You just gotta fight for it. Yeah. The bottom line, you gotta fight. You know, like rocking when he climbed that 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 oh uh, the stairs. <laughs> 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 he finally got up there. <laughs> My son, he was playing um the um Eye of the Tiger one time when I was listening to it. I was outside the room. I said, What is he? What is he listening to? The Eye of the Tiger. Doom. He just kept on. Like that was his height song. You know, and he was like doing this little work and stuff. I didn't know he was doing it. I said, I went to my wife. I said, baby, what? This boy, he let the eyes tight. Why he keep playing the song? Over and over and over and over again. She said, well, he's doing a little thing for school. And I said, oh, okay, okay. So that kind of hype him up. Doom, doom, yeah. doom. Da, doom, doom, doom. But that was his motivation. <laughs> that was his motivation. You do whatever right. you got to do to motivate yeah, you. Yeah, you do. You keep pushing forward. Let nothing, um, you know, real. don't let the past hold you in the past. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we can't, we we scared to release something to move forward, and we stuck somewhere where you can't move forward because you playing victim. You sit there, you feeling sorry for yourself, and the people know who I'm talking to. So at the end of the day, the ones that's playing victim, you know, realize you have to let go to move forward. Yeah. All right. The truth about the history of all men of days past, a history that is complex, ugly, brutish, immoral, and leaves no man, regardless of his skin complexion, guiltless. But the left wants us to believe otherwise. To them, imperialism, cannibalism, murder, slavery, all of these undeniably sinful acts are forgiven in a historical context so long as they were not committed by white men. So they can forget the murderous Persian Empire. They can forget the cannibalism of indigenous tribes. They can forget the heinous Mm. actions of imperialistic Egyptian Empire, the Turkish Empire, the Muslim Abbasid and Rashidun Caliphate Empires, the Chinese Qing and Ming Empires, the Mongol Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the Japanese Empire. We can forget the fact that the overwhelming majority of the world's empire were not run by white men. They also, by the way, They also, by the way, choose to forget the fact that the first to abolish the practice of slavery was Great Britain. Wow. Yeah, that's that's correct. I think Thomas Saul said something about that. Um, They was fighting against uh, slavery. Mm -hmm. But the thing is is that, you know, um, when she said that, it made me think about what I said about customized. Slavery was customized in America. It it gave me a... It's actually giving me a bigger picture that... um, other people was going through something too so as men you know we have we have failed each other and 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 it's sad because we have to understand that for us to be better we have to come to an understanding and realize that we missed the mark you know what i'm saying all throughout the whole world not just in america but in other places too you know what i'm saying so uh is it worse in america or is it worse where somebody was eating somebody and cutting their heart out? It's just worse, period. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It's worse, period. I might say don't say it is what it I, is. I didn't say that. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it just, it just, it's, but it's yeah. to a point where, you know, it's just, all of it was wrong. Let's just keep it real. All of it was wrong. We can't point fingers. You know what I'm saying? It was just wrong, period. They were then followed by the French colonies, who were then followed by the United States. Centuries Mm -hmm. of slavery and three countries of white men led the world in ending it. No, no, no. Don't clap. You're supposed to forget it. You're supposed to forget it because (laughs) leftist indoctrination teaches us today that it only really mattered. Slavery only really mattered when they did it. The white man's history uh, needs to never, ever be forgotten. But what if we're not talking about history? What if we're talking about present? What if we're talking about today? People like Colin Kaepernick hate America right now, and that hatred is rooted in some intangible concept of the present sin of our country's mere existence. Surely, that must be the reason why, on the 4th of July, Colin also tweeted, how can we truly celebrate independence 
on a day that intentionally robbed our ancestors of theirs. To find my independence, I went home, end quote. He was referring to Africa. Colin took a trip to Ghana because in his own words, he wanted to see what his people saw before they were forcefully taken away. And I really want to pause and drive this point home, so mm. let me restate it. In lieu of celebrating his independence in America, Colin got on a plane and went to Africa, a continent upon which he found better grounds for celebration, which is interesting. It's interesting because currently, today in Africa, there are close to 700,000 slaves, and this is going to shock the heck out of the too woke to see what's in front of them crowd, but they are not being enslaved by white people. They are being enslaved by other Africans. Mm -hmm. Child soldiers, human trafficking, forced labor, all exist within the same sub-Saharan region that the transatlantic but you hear about the human trafficking and the yeah, children you do, soldiers, you but you don't Yo, you hear actually about see it in the, the, in the movies. Uh, what's the name of the movie? What's on like current? Yeah, but about currently. remember the movie Blood Diamond? Yeah. Yeah, you seen that? You know what I'm saying? But that was it. Was, well, yeah. yeah son was but yeah, um. But yeah, he was a child soldier. Yeah, and that's but what they, she's talking about. But yeah, but you didn't see the slavery side of it. I mean, at the end of the day, mean, if you take somebody and make them do what you want them to do. And so that's a, pretty much considered so a slave. It's like the children who are a slave for the people, you know, the terrorists. <sighs> they enslaved their mind. Wow. You know, it's like they they enslaved. If you look at Blood Diamond, this young man mind was enslaved mm -hmm. to a point where he was broken. So he's broken to do something that a, a slave master was telling him to do. Yeah. And it's sure. sad, man. Yeah slave trade took place. African bodies are being sold, say they were being sold then, and they are not being purchased by any country of predominantly white men. It's a wonder that Colin never mentioned that in Ghana today, his beloved country, country of uh, emotional reprieve from the horror of America, 20,000 children live in slavery to support the fishing industry along Lake Volta. In fact, it was leftist network CNN that covered the story last year when a boy was rescued from slavery and had explained to them that while in captivity, he was made to work tirelessly and that if a, the famished children were caught trying to eat the fish, they were beaten so senselessly that they wished that they had never been born. Why didn't Colin mention any of this? Why haven't any of the alleged courageous leaders on black issues of oppression mentioned any of this? I know, because they aren't leaders at all. They're all extortionists. Yeah. Colin extorted black America to earn millions. Colin extorted Native Americans to maintain his image, and Colin extorted Ghana for a photo op so he could continue to earn those millions. But Colin wasn't the first, he isn't the only, and he certainly he won't be the well. last. So. To Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, to Nisi Coates, to CNN, to the New York Times, to MSNBC and their anchors, to every single one of you race hustlers who have extorted black pain to line your own pocket. What did she say? She called them race say? hustlers. Race hustlers. <laughs> yeah, they use a. <laughs> Dang. They used a race card wow. to be able to. Uh, <laughs> Support themselves. Oh man, that's <laughs> just, 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 just no sugar coat. Oh just, just, man, just, oh man. I'm calling you out. I mean, I didn't know wow. a lot of this stuff, man. I, I mean, didn't either. I just thought that slavery just started in America, man. I really did, man. And I was, uh, man, I just, I didn't understand it. I'm like, man, how can people do people like that, yeah. man? But then when I got a better understanding that, you know, it, it just didn't start. But no. But yeah, but listen, in America, so, but it started now, other places too, man. Yeah. You know, when she talking about cannibalism, I'm like, cannibalism? Yeah, you yeah, I people. Huh? Is that for real? And it's for real, man. I'm like, man, boy, I mean, wow, man. You know, I just say, man, you know, I can't, I can't, I learned to just let things go, man. Forgive. You know, so I can't sit there and dwell on stuff, man. It happened. But I'm don't sad it's twist, happened. Don't twist it. To where this information should not be shared. You want to just share only the parts you think are, you know, the nice parts of slavery. You don't want to share that uh, uh, within a race there was slavery. You want to make it seem like, oh, only white people had a slave. Yeah. But you also find out later on as you do your own research and you listen that black 
had slaves that were black in other countries they had slaves that were the same race as them wow oh sorry it's who have blindfolded the black youth against seeing the opportunities that lay beneath their feet here in America, in the land of the free, in the home of the brave, I say this to you. There will be a Blexit, a black exit. <laughs> You have seen, you have seen how a man was made a slave. That sentence is the first half of a Frederick Douglass quote. I like it because it rings true now. I have seen how a man was made a slave. I have seen how black Americans have been enslaved to the debate of race, how liberals, how leftists, how Democrats continue to enchain us to this inconsequential debate while robbing, us, while robbing us blindly of our family, our faith, and our future through their abhorrent policies. You have seen how a man was made a slave. Yeah. Then he continues the quotation. And now you shall see how a slave was made a man. Mm. To the veterans. And so I say to, to the veterans of this black ideological civil war, those of us that have survived the constant onslaught and the media thrashings and fight daily to awaken our brothers and sisters, to the patriots who have fought beside us, cheered us on, to my supporters, those of you that have seen me to this point, from just a girl on YouTube with a different idea to the very soon to be published author of the aptly entitled book, Blackout, how black America will make its second escape from the Democrat plantations. I don't say that. I don't look like that. To all of you, to all of you in this room, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for experiencing this journey, journey with me, but most importantly, um, for seeing how this former slave to poisonous liberal ideology <laughs> was right made a woman, that. was made a patriot, was made an American. May God bless you all. That was good. That was good. That's good. Wow. Just the, the, the message. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the message in that one. The elegant, the respect. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right, YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe, yeah. I was, follow. Uh, us. You know, if I was thinking about it's First Timothy six, um, chapter six. I mean, it's First Timothy, verse six, one and two. It says, "Servants be obedient to them that are masters according to your flesh." It says, "Servants." Um, the King James version say, um, "Master um, slaves." Um, they consider, you know, That's back exactly. in the biblical days, it was mm -hmm. more of um, a servant, and they use the same term as slaves. You know what I'm saying? So in other places, you may have slaves. It, went, it may have not been as bad as it was in America. And the places that she said were cannibalism. You know what I'm saying? Cannibalism, mm -hmm. cannibalism, yeah. So at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? It was different It was different things going on, but it's still slavery. No matter what, man. Everybody deserves their freedom. Simple as that, yeah. man. So, um, I mean... But you still don't want to play victim no, because sometimes victim. we hold on to the past where we can't move forward in But the, the past, present. it should be just there just to help push you forward, not to, like you said, hold you back. And then on top of that, a lot of times, you know, especially in um, the, the places that, you know, I, I call it the hood. Where I came from, <laughs> a lot of times we come out of the hood, but we don't go back to the hood to let the people know, hey, look, this is what I did. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to go back. Just to share a Just to share testimony. the information, man. Hey, to look, man, if I did it, you can do it too. Yeah. Because sometimes they don't have the information. Oh, they don't you know what they think they can't do it. Yeah. I mean, the Bible said my people are described by lack of knowledge. So you got mm -hmm. to get the wisdom because a lot of times we won't pick up a book and read to be able to get the wisdom. But we got too much Google. 
Too much Google <laughs> too to much not Google. have what you need to need <laughs> to have. You can go right to your tel- your cell phone, go to Google if you want to find my anything. Say I don't need Google. My mother knows everything. <laughs> well, in this particular case, you need Google. You need yeah. Google. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm 100% right on everything <laughs> no, I say. No, no, But I try to just share what I'm feeling out of my heart. That's it, no. you know. So if you feel like I'm wrong, then that that's your opinion. I understand. Yeah, give us some that's comments. Is, and, uh, yeah, right. give yeah. us some comments. You, some you, feedback you're on more that. welcome to have your opinion. Yeah. Hey, look, I, I I love other people's opinions. We all um, reach each other on yeah. a, on a different level, you know. So, but other than that, man, YouTube family, I love all you, right, YouTube. I'm gonna say this right here. Peace. Peace, YouTube. Don't forget like and subscribe.